Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about astral projection. More specifically, how you can separate standard dreams from astral projection during sleep. <music> Before we get started, I do just want to say that this video, along with everything on my channel, is merely my own personal experiences. This is the way that I identify the differences between a standard dream, a lucid dream, or astral projection. But it's not going to be the same for everyone because everyone's minds work slightly differently. So don't take this as a step-by-step -step how-to. Instead, take this as a small guide from me that you can then build on within your own magical practice. Astral projection is probably one of the most fascinating aspects of magical practice. And when people get started in witchcraft, they really want to learn more about what astral projection is and how they can do it for themselves. Now, a brief description of astral projection is that you are separating your consciousness, your spiritual being from your physical being so that your spiritual consciousness can travel elsewhere while your body stays on the physical plane. It allows you to traverse to different locations, interact with animal spirits and other spirits alike, and some very proficient members of the community are able to interact with other practitioners on the astral plane so that they can work together in a common environment without ever having to be around each other in the real world. Astral projection is a huge topic in itself, and there's lots of different ways to do it. Many people will astral project while they are awake, entering into a particularly calm, quiet, and reflective state so that they can separate their spiritual conscious from their physical body. Whereas other people will astral project when they are asleep, because it is much easier to separate your spiritual conscious from your physical body when there aren't as many distractions. Now, astral projection is not easy. It takes a lot of time, patience, and practice. And sometimes when you're just getting started, you may really struggle to separate what is real astrally versus what is a dream or what is simply a guided meditation. It can be very difficult to separate the three. So today we're gonna to be talking about astral projecting during sleep. And it's probably one of the easiest forms of astral projection, if you could call astral projection easy, which I don't. However, a lot of people, especially when they are building up their psychic abilities, when they are strengthening their abilities, they will find that they first start astral projecting during sleep because it's without any of the distractions you have in waking life. So if you are interested in learning astral projection, I would recommend learning mind calming techniques. The ability to still and slow your mind so that you can focus on one thing instead of many things at a time. And I would also recommend starting dream journaling, documenting your dreams, because usually when you start your path to astral projection, you're going to find that astral projecting during sleep is going to be easier than astral projecting when you're awake. And in the future, I'm hoping to have book recommendations and other topic videos on astral projection so that you can really get a further understanding on it. But for today's video, I really wanted to specialize in on how you can recognize the difference between a standard dream and astral projection. Now, I've been astral projecting during my sleep since I was a child. And it's only recently when I really started to think about how I can recognize the differences. I've always been able to recognize the differences. But what makes astral projection different from a dream? Dreams are creations of our imagination, of our mind while we're sleeping. While it's doing all of its hidden functions, the things that keep us going during our sleep, we are experiencing dreams. Now, dreams are often related to the things that we are experiencing in life, whether they are turmoils, difficulties, relationships, friendships. They often feel very convoluted, very random. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll often find that you have a random collection of memories of dreaming that just don't make any sense. And that's because our mind constantly keeps resetting dreams. Every 10 minutes or so, our mind jumps us into a brand new dream. And so often when we wake up, we have a very convoluted, very strange depiction of events because our brain has been jumping between scene after scene after scene, and they might have no relation to one another, but we've just kind of been remembering bits and pieces from all of it. Now, if you can lucid dream, that is the ability of controlling your actions in a dream. So instead of watching a movie, you become an acting character which is a really fun experience and can really help building the skills that are gonna to lead to astral projection. Now, astral projection is different in that we are a character, but the movie that we're in isn't our own creation. 
Instead, we are in a location surrounded by other spirits, other beings who have their own consciousness, who have their own thoughts and actions, and they are undertaking things regardless of us. That's the main difference here, is that within a dream, everything is a creation of our mind. But when we are astral projecting, we are just one conscious being out of many thousands on a plane of existence that isn't created by us. We are simply visitors to the plane, not the creator, which can make it quite alarming for a lot of people because you don't have the control on the astral plane that you have in your own head, because you can't control things the way you would a dream. You aren't the one that's creating it, you're simply present within it. So when it comes to astral projection and lucid dreaming, it can be really useful to note down and acknowledge the differences. If you can recognise when you're astral projecting versus when you're dreaming, it gives you a better understanding of what you did to get there, and also the things that you're able to do while you're there. When you're on the astral plane, you can interact with others, you can interact with spirits and familial spirits potentially. You can interact with spirit guides and other beings that you maybe would never have the chance to. It's a really fascinating place to be, but unless you acknowledge that you're there, you're likely just going to stand there and not do anything for the entirety of your astral projection before you end up coming back into your body again. The first difference is that astral projection and dreaming will occur at completely different rates. Now, most people will dream every single night if we allow or if our brain is able to enter into its dreaming state. Even if we don't remember the dreams that we're having, we are still experiencing them. It's just that we maybe don't acknowledge that we're having them or we don't remember them when we wake up. Dreams will occur when our brain enters a particular state during sleep whereas astral projection does not occur half as frequently. Now, the frequency is going to depend on the person, and it's going to depend on your actions. If you are purposefully trying to astral project, and you can already astral project, then you can astral project basically whenever you want. However, if you're just getting started and you don't know how to astral project yet, you're not going to be astral projecting very frequently, if at all. But generally speaking, we will dream every single night, even if we don't remember it as long as we enter into the time frame when our brain is able to dream, whereas astral projection will often occur much less frequently. For me, I astral project usually once every two or three months without consciously doing it, and it's just something that's happened as a regular occurrence throughout my life, but it doesn't happen for me every single day. So typically, I'm able to acknowledge the difference because not only does it feel different in many ways that we're going to be talking about later, it also is a very infrequent occurrence. So I can pick it out from a sea of dreams because it feels, it behaves differently, and also it's not very frequent. The second difference between the two for me is that my dreams typically take place in very generic environments. They're usually not places I recognise all that well. It's a random field, it's a random hill, it's a random castle, it's a random supermarket, completely unbranded, I might want to add. My brain is basically like a Hallmark movie. It just takes all of the recognisable brandings off everything and gives it to me as a dream. So when I'm dreaming, if I'm in a supermarket, it's a supermarket I don't recognise with a layout that I've never seen before. None of the bottles have labels on it. None of the shops have any signs on it. It's just a random, generic, computer-generated, almost, location for my dream to take place in. And also, the people in my dreams don't have faces. They aren't people I recognise. I've never seen them before. I might recognise their characteristics as being representative of people I know in my life, but they aren't actually people. They're just, like, faceless things. They're like the Thumb Thumbs. You know the Thumb Thumbs from Spy Kids? They're like the Thumb Thumbs. They're just very generic, faceless people that are playing characters within my dreams. And so in my dream, it's a very generic landscape with generic characters and generic places. The storylines are also pretty bananas most of the time, and I come away from it feeling very confused. And so straight away, I can tell when I'm in a dream. However, astral projections are not generic for me at all. My astral projections take place in the location I am whether it's the dining room or the driveway, whether it's the back garden, my living room, my bedroom, I can see exactly where I am and everything is in the same place as I left it. And I mean everything. If someone else is around me and they're watching TV and I'm astral projecting, I can watch TV with them and I can tell what's going on. And the next day, when I come out of my astral projection, I can interact with that person and talk about the TV show that they were watching alone whilst I was asleep upstairs. 
And that applies to most things. If you leave a bowl on the side overnight in your astral projection, that bowl will be exactly where you left it because it's not in your head. Instead, you're in the place that you were, but just in a different plane of existence. Now, the one big thing that separates dreams and astral projections for me is that the location that I'm in isn't quite normal. So if I'm in the dining room, instead of the dining room being the same colours as what it is in real life, instead the walls will be dripping with purple goo. Or if I'm outside, instead of the street lights lighting the road up in a golden glow, instead everything is grayscale. Everything is the same, exactly the same to an unnerving level. However, something is different. That might be the colouring, that might be the texture of things, that might be the other things that are there with me. So I can usually straight away acknowledge the differences between the two, because if it's somewhere I recognise with things that are very, very specific, then I know that it's more likely to be an astral projection because my dreams are exceptionally vague. They are literally like a Hallmark movie inside my head, except the production value is probably higher. So that's the second difference between the two. Usually I can spot it straight away. And if you get into noting down all of your dream time experiences, you're probably going to start noticing extreme differences between the two. And when you start noticing those differences, you'll be able to acknowledge it faster and faster when you're in that place so that you can then change and adapt what you're doing to suit where you are. The third difference is that in dreams, your location is going to change frequently. So is the story, so are the characters. As we are entering into our dream time, our brain constantly puts us on shuffle. It keeps changing the location we're in, the people that we're around, the storyline. So when you wake up in the morning, you might think, hang on, why was Cthulhu in a supermarket again? When did Aquaman get there? Why was I suddenly flying? What's happening? It's because your brain has essentially put your dreams on shuffle. So when you wake up in the morning, you might be really confused as to what's happened because the storyline of your dream makes no sense and you can't remember how you got from one place to another. And that's because your brain remixed you while you were asleep and so it comes out as a jumbled mess. But when it comes to astral projection, your brain can't remix the story because you're not in your brain, you're outside of it. And so when it comes to astral projection, when you come out of it in the morning, you will remember everything, every tedious, boring little detail. I mean, if you walked two hours in a particular direction, you're gonna remember all of that two hour walk. And I mean all of it, all the tedious moments, you are going to remember it because your brain can't put you on shuffle if you're outside of your consciousness. So you're not gonna wind up in a random location and you don't know how you got there. Instead, you're gonna remember every painful second of walking there or flying there or swimming there or whatever it turns out to be. You're gonna remember all of it. So when you've astral projected during your sleep and you come out of it in the morning, you're going to remember all of it, not just a random collection of bits. You're not gonna get the highlight reel of random dreams. Instead, you're gonna remember every tedious detail of the astral projection because it's not much different from being awake in your day-to-day -day life. In our dreams, we allow our subconscious to take over for us, but in astral projection, we are essentially living life as we would if we were waking, except our consciousness is outside of our physical bodies. The fourth is a very unnerving way for you to recognise that you are astral projecting. In dreams, all of the beings that are around us are drawn from our memory and our imagination, and so everything comes from somewhere within us. If you are astral projecting, however, all of the beings around you are not restricted to what you can dream up, what you can think of. And so you're going to be seeing creatures, beings and spirits that you could never have imagined. And not only could you never imagine them, they also are not under your control. And that's the big difference between the two. Within a dream, the world that we have created is our own. You are the creator of it. But in astral projection, the spirits and the creatures that you are encountering you aren't controlling them. They are their own living, breathing spirits that can do as they please. And sometimes you can see very alarming things. I have seen spirits in astral projection that I would never want to see again. And I'm very glad that I managed to get out of there. It's very unnerving depending on where you end up. And this also relies on your environment and location as well. The spirits that I see in the astral plane as it is over England are likely gonna be different from the things that you might see on the astral plane in 
Australia or in America. So it's going to very much vary depending on your location, but you'll often be seeing spirits and interacting with spirits that you have never seen before and couldn't even make up. And also, the spiritual beings that you experience in astral projection actually talk to you or have the ability to communicate with you. In my dreams anyway, no one's mouth moves because no one has a mouth. You know, everyone's like a thumb thumb. They're just like pre-designed computer characters. And so no one talks like you would talk in real life. I can hear what they're saying, but it's like straight in my head, like telepathy rather than actual communication in the dream. Whereas on the astral plane, beings can talk to you, they can communicate with you, and it's going to seem different than it does in a dream. And the voices are also different. You're gonna be experiencing languages that you've never heard before, that you could never even imagine hearing before. And so it's definitely a different experience. The fifth recognizable difference really leads on from the last. Not only are these spirits different than anything you've ever interacted with or seen before, but they're also going to behave entirely of their own volition. And this can be exceptionally scary if you aren't used to dealing with spirits. Now, as mentioned in the last point, within our dreams, we are the creator of that dream. And so everything within that dream ultimately is controlled by us, which is why lucid dreaming is so useful. Ultimately though, in a dream, we are the puppet master. We are controlling everything in that space, even if we don't acknowledge that we are. In astral projection, you aren't controlling anything or anyone. And so the spirits in astral projection behave entirely of their own volition, which is why it's important to always be safe when you are there. So don't go prodding the spirit bear because it might prod you back even harder. And you can't wake yourself up from astral projection in quite the same way as you can when you are dreaming. So you just have to be careful. Don't do anything reckless. Just make sure that you are being respectful when you are there. Just be careful not to enter anything's personal space. Make sure that you're keeping a distance from anything that you don't understand yet. Because while in dreams, you are the controller of everything, in astral projection, you are just one spiritual being among many. And nothing is going to bow down and kiss your feet in astral projection, at least. Most things are not going to bow down in case you're feet. I have to say, I've never experienced that, but who knows, maybe someone might have. Now, to further this point a little bit more, some of these spiritual beings are not only going to respond when you poke them or when you annoy them, but they're going to straight up have bad intentions for you just because you're there. So it's really important to be exceptionally careful and important to remember that not all spirits are nice. I know a lot of people would love to think that all spirits are like Casper the Friendly Ghost, but they simply aren't. Spirits are gonna have different moral compasses, they're gonna have different ethics, they're gonna have different belief systems, they're gonna behave differently than a human or a dog or a cat. They have their own perception of the world and so they're going to behave according to that. And some of them are gonna be really nice and some of them are really not gonna be nice and then most of them are gonna be somewhere in between. So respect is a massive one. Always make sure that you go in having it and make sure that you're being safe. The next difference between astral projection and dreaming is kind of a two for one. Firstly, it's going to be considerably more memorable because rather than being asleep, you're actively conscious, you're actively awake, you're just outside of your body. So instead of barely remembering it, you'll find that astral projection during sleep is incredibly memorable. You're going to remember it vividly as though you were going about your day-to-day -day life because you essentially were. And with that comes exhaustion. And I mean a lot of exhaustion. It's gonna feel like you've been awake all night because guess what? You have been. While your body will have slept, your mind hasn't been allowed to sleep because you were taking it elsewhere, wandering around the astral plane. And so when you come back to your body again and you wake up in the morning, you are going to be so tired, you are gonna wanna sleep for an entire day. This always happens to me. I will wake up the next day and I will feel completely exhausted, like I've just pulled two whole all-nighters without a single nap and without a drop of caffeine. I will feel terrible, and I mean like, awful. And so it's likely that if you experience astral projection during sleep, you're going to experience this as well. Because during dreams, our brain is actually undertaking really important restorative functions that allows us to feel awake and upbeat the next day. And so in astral projection, although your body has been allowed to rest, your consciousness hasn't. So the next day you are going to feel so tired. And it's not that you're gonna feel physically tired, you're just gonna feel mentally, consciously exhausted, like you need to sleep for two whole days. And honestly, afterwards, 
you might. Now, a slightly more unnerving sign is that things may have followed you from the astral plane. Now, I don't want to terrify anyone in this. It is something that you can deal with relatively easily and the extent to which things might follow you is gonna vary depending on who you are, where you were, what you did. Like I said, don't poke the spiritual bear. However, there are cases where spiritual beings can actually tag along back to the physical plane. They're still going to be spirits, but now they're residing in your space instead of the spiritual plane, so just be careful of that. Now, this can be exceptionally minor. For instance, if you were to trip over a bramble bush in the astral plane and cut your leg a little bit, when you come out of the astral plane, you may find that you have a small cut on your leg in the same place. It can get very extreme. The other end of the spectrum would be that a spiritual being has attached itself onto you so it can have a piggyback ride back to our plane of existence, where it then proceeds to destroy your life. But of course, please remember here, the world is not made up of zero or 100%. It's made up of the 99% between the two as well. So I'm not saying that the options are either slight cut on the ankle and spirit attachment. What I'm saying is that these are really the two extremes of the spectrum. And in many cases, you're gonna experience none of the above but you definitely can have spiritual attachments which is why I would always recommend every practitioner have some form of personal protection on them at all times. This can be anything from an enchanted piece of jewellery to a complicated protection ritual. Just make sure you have something because especially astral projecting in this way it's often not done purposefully so you might not be prepared for it to happen so just make sure you always have personal protections and then you're ready for anything. Though, of course, I would also recommend learning a little bit about cleansing rituals and a little bit about protection and banishings, just because that way, if the worst does happen, you know how to deal with it. Otherwise, you might be stuck with a spirit attachment and you're not going to know what to do with it. The next difference between the two is that dreams can repeat themselves. Astral projection can't. Because our dreams are made up entirely by our mind, our mind can essentially repeat storylines, especially if it's something you haven't worked on in your personal life. You may find that the same dream will occur several days in a row, or it'll occur randomly over the course of several months or several years. I know that I have the same dream I have every two and a half years, and it gets kind of weird. But while dreams can repeat themselves because they are essentially storylines created in our own heads, astral projections can't. The experiences that you have on the astral plane will not repeat themselves in the same way every time you go there because the spirits that are also on the astral plane are going to interact with you differently every single time. They are not puppets that your mind is controlling. And so although you might go to the same place every single time you astral project, the spirits and how they're going to interact with you is going to be completely different because they're individual spirits with their own consciousness. They're going to behave differently every single time. So you'll often find that every astral projection is extremely different, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, but astral projections are not going to repeat themselves because it's not a pre-designed story that you're following. It's real life, just in a different plane of existence. And then the last, and probably the most terrifying difference between the two, is that in dreams, you will wake up if you are falling or if something bad is about to happen, but in astral projection, you won't. And this is probably the most terrifying of them all. I've experienced awful things in astral projection. I've experienced wonderful things in astral projection. So just take note of that. You've got to take the good with the bad. You never know what's going to happen. So in dreams, if you trip over or if you fall off a high surface, if something is about to hit you or if something really bad is going to happen, your body will jolt you awake and you'll feel really panicked and your heart will be racing and you'll be having like cold sweats and all of that stuff. And that's because your body just freaked out for a minute. It realized your heart rate was dropping too low and so it decided to give you a jump start in your dream that's going to scare you back into your heart rate being normal again and then you'll fall back asleep again. So usually when you fall over in a dream, you're never going to hit the floor. And I've noticed this every time I trip over in a dream, which is a lot, you'd think I wouldn't be as clumsy in my own dreams as I am in real life, but I am. I always wake up before I hit the floor. Or if something is thrown at me, I always wake up before it hits me in the face. If I fall while flying and I'm really high in the air and I'm plummeting towards the earth, I will always wake up before I hit the ground. In astral projection, that isn't the case. Although it's not difficult to get back to your body, I've never ever had an experience where I'm trapped there in any way. It is a different process to your body waking you up from a bad dream. One of these things is your brain creating the storyline and then waking you up from it. 
But when it comes to astral projection, you have separated yourself from your physical form. And so to get back, you have to get back to your physical form. It's not as easy as just clicking your fingers and being back in your body again. Sometimes it can be a process. And because you have to go through a process to get yourself out of astral projection and your brain isn't controlling what's happening, those spirits and that place can interact with you however it pleases. And that isn't always nice. If you fall over, you will hit the ground unless you can get yourself out of the astral projection before you hit the ground. If, for instance, you're being eaten alive by wolves, you will feel every second of that and then everything will go black, which is an astral projection I've had in the past that was absolutely awful. <laughs> and then you have to pull yourself out of it again. And it's, it's not fun. It really isn't fun when that kind of thing happens. And it can happen. And that's really the big difference between the two is that in dreaming, your body will more than likely wake you up. In astral projection, because you have to manually pull yourself back to your body again, it can be really annoying and you will probably trip over something. I trip over stuff all the time. And although it doesn't hurt in the way that it would hurt in the real world, it still doesn't feel fun to see the floor coming up at you real quick after you've tripped over a rock. So it doesn't feel the same in the astral plane. I think it's really important to note that. Things definitely feel different, almost hazy. You can still feel things, but for me anyway, it's not like super sharp and intense. It's almost like foggy. It feels foggy. And I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but if I were to trip over a rock and like really stub my toe, in the real world, I would be in pain. I'd be thinking I'd broken a bone, you know, I'd be panicking. But in astral projection, it doesn't feel that bad. It's like an, oh, ow. And then that's it. You can just move on with it. But for me anyway, the surefire sign that something is different is that bad things can happen and your body doesn't wake you up. So those are the main things that I use to determine whether it's an astral projection or a dream. And I've noticed that the more I focus on the differences between them, the more frequently I do have astral projections. I've noticed that the more I pay attention to it, the more my brain slips into that path and I end up astral projecting. And it tends to happen in bursts. I often find that I'll have three or four astral projections in say two weeks and then I won't have anything for months. And that very much depends on your mindset. It depends on what you want. If you really, really don't want to astral project, you can stop yourself from doing that. There are lots of techniques that you can use to tether yourself to the physical plane, to your physical body so that you can't astral project. And I will hopefully be talking more about that in the future, but you can look up sigils, symbols, seals that will stop you from astral projecting if you really, really don't want to. But I hope that this has helped any of you who are interested in knowing the differences. I know that when I first started astral projecting, I was incredibly confused. I didn't know what was going on until I realized what astral projection was. And by that point, it was already too late. I was already doing it. And so it's taken me a long time to really come to terms with astral projecting and feeling comfortable doing it and being able to separate out dreams and astral projections because sometimes the dreams that we have can be really real, but that doesn't mean that it's an astral projection. Astral projection is a very specific thing that can be done when you're awake, it can be done when you're asleep. So it does separate itself from dreams in that way, it's just a further separation. But generally, not all vivid dreams are going to be astral projections. And you might find that what you thought was an astral projection maybe wasn't an astral projection. But if you do have anything to add to this list, please let me know. Is there anything that you've experienced that will separate an astral projection from a dream for you? Because obviously this is only my personal practice and the things that I use as defining characteristics might not apply to everyone. So please let me know and let everyone else know down in the comment section so that they can figure out whether they're astral projecting or whether they're simply having really vivid dreams. If you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really means so much to me. If you do have any experiences with astral projection that you would like to share, feel free to put it down in the comment section. You'll have a discord server the link is in the description box where you could talk more about astral projection and all of my mods on there absolutely phenomenal so thank you so much for all of your work on there if you do have any questions comments concerns video ideas or just want to chit chat with the community feel free to put it down in the comment section and if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel in this video feel free to hit subscribe i try my best with magical content every single week that's a mouthful so i hope you guys are all having a marvelous magical day and i will see you in the next video bye this is the first time my hair has been down in a video in a very long time. It's like all the way down, like to my waist and it's not pinned back. So this bit is doing this again. I hate it. This is why I always pin my hair back in videos, but I took my hair out of like the bun it was in and I looked at it and went, that's kind of cute. I might keep it. And I'm immediately regretting it because it's doing this gappy thing. Cause I have a cowlick like right here.
that keeps fucking it up. <laughs> this video is already so long and I haven't even got to the point yet. Mm -hmm.